Roman Reigns has finally broken his silence after losing the WWE Championship to Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. He posted a video of him at the gym and said yesterday he mourned and today is day one. This means he's working on his comeback. Roman is coming back for his title and his redemption. So Cody Rhodes better watch out. I'm going to also assume that he's taking a long break as well. It was expected that he would take a break, especially after that long run as the WWE the undisputed universal champion based on the last couple of nights you can tell that this was truly an emotional moment for him these video clips of him and Heyman embracing each other after he lost really tells a story but at least Triple H did say in this press conference that after Wrestlemania Roman has a story moving forward that is going to blow our minds it might even be better than the tribal chief storyline he had going on and I trust Triple H after his recent booking I gotta trust the man something tells me that the feud with Seth Rollins is going to be the next thing that he does and honestly that is going to be insane i cannot wait i think it's fine for him to take some time off because after losing the wwe championship that's an emotional thing man that's a huge loss and it's the end of an era just look at him and Heyman, like i said earlier hugging after he lost this man needs to take some time off to mentally and physically heal in other news, Tony Khan spoke out about the all-in footage that is reportedly going to be shown at Wednesday Night Dynamite, and he said this about it. AEW has a great track record on delivering what we advertise, and it is real footage. The Young Bucks will show backstage footage from All In, the most important event in AEW history, the world record holder for the most tickets ever sold for any wrestling record, over 81,000 total, and it was an important night backstage as well. Tony Khan does not specifically mention anything about CM Punk, but I just can't see everyone in the company telling these news sources like Fightful that they're actually going to show CM Punk footage only to bait and switch. I think that would be even worse than showing the Punk footage. Like, it would have been better off to do nothing. That would have been the best case scenario, but now it's even better to show the Punk stuff than to just troll your audience. Trolling everyone would just be stupid. If they actually go through with the Punk footage, then it's also goofy. But like I said, it's at least better to do that than it is to troll and lie to your audience. I saw a tweet that that said, it's kind of sad if you think about it, that, that they signed Mercedes, they signed Will Ospreay, and they signed Okada only for a CM Punk that's in the WWE to be their top draw. This is some serious goofy stuff. I don't know how Tony Khan thought this was a great idea, but anyways, let's see what happened. Right now, CM Punk's having the time of his life in WWE. I think they got to let it go, but we'll see what happens on Diamond. Maybe after releasing the footage, they won't talk about Punk anymore. We have an update on Seth Rollins and his WWE status. He will not be on TV for the next few months as he is going to rest his knee. Rollins really pushed his body over this weekend, especially after the injury that he suffered a couple months ago. I think a few weeks isn't even enough time. I think that Seth Rollins should be off of TV for a couple of months, maybe two or three months. He could use a break. It's also going to lead to a bigger pop if they decide to wait. They probably won't though because Rollins is a pretty big draw, so I understand bringing him back as soon soon as possible. At WrestleMania 40, we saw the return of Stephanie McMahon, and while it was great to see her back in that ring, it might not be a permanent thing. PW Insider said this, Stephanie McMahon has not officially returned to WWE as an employee or executive in any way, shape, or form. Hopefully, she does eventually work for the WWE again. Stephanie McMahon put in so much of her blood, sweat, and tears into this business. You can tell that she has a passion for the WWE. I really hope that she can come back to what she helped build because honestly, it would be nice to have at least one McMahon back in the company. On top of that, she's a good McMahon. Not a shitty McMahon, but a good McMahon. Last night, we saw a long segment between The Rock and Cody Rhodes. As we saw, it was the beginning of their feud. Whenever The Rock comes back to the WWE, they will start that up again. And Dave Meltzer is talking about how this is being set up for WrestleMania 41. This is what old Davey had to say. That The Rock versus Cody Rhodes is certainly the plan right now. Yes, and not for a long time. Next year's WrestleMania, it's going to be big. But man, Rock and Cody, it's natural. They booked it. I don't think that's correct at all. From what I saw, it looks like it's going to be a match that takes place before The Rock's WrestleMania 41 match with Roman Reigns. I think that The Rock and Cody will take place either at SummerSlam, maybe the Royal Rumble, or the first episode of Raw on Netflix. I think that could be a big draw. I can't see it happening at WrestleMania. Cody got his moment already. He does not need another one. He cannot take away that match between Roman and The Rock again. It's got to happen at WrestleMania 41. Unless the WWE is planning to push that back to WrestleMania 42, it's totally possible, and I could see that, but I really think that it's happening at 41. 
Anyways, now let's talk about the Raw after WrestleMania. The show started off with Triple H and Cody Rhodes. It was really nice to see these two share this special moment together. Cody Rhodes cut a decent promo. There's not much to say about this promo because honestly, these promos don't really do much. They don't have much of a story to talk about. And that's when The Rock came out. And I'm not gonna lie, this was kind of bad in my opinion. It went way too long and they didn't really say too much. Like I was sitting there saying like, what's the point of all this anyways the ww could have honestly cut this from the show and it would have been totally fine nobody would have thought about it a bit cody and the rock switching titles was also just very weird when the fans are chanting this is awkward that's how you know it is indeed awkward the worst part about this segment is that we didn't even get the payoff at all. The Rock handed Cody something and said, don't break my heart again or something like that. And that was pretty much it. We never really got an idea of what it was. This was a poor way to start Cody's reign. Hopefully this leads to something bigger and better. But still, even if it does, I still think this was a terrible way to really start off Cody's new reign. And the entire era of the WWE, the new era of the WWE started off like this. After that, Ilya Dragunov showed up to have a match with Shinsuke Nakamura, and this was good. Dragunov looks like a star, and he will be in the draft, which is great to see. I'm going to need to see him and Gunther in that ring. I think that's a match that we got to see soon. Honestly, though, it might even be a WrestleMania main event, so we might have to save it for down the line. R-Truth and The Miz fought the Judgment Day in a two-on-three handicap match until John Cena made a surprise return. That was a lot of fun. It's always nice to see John Cena in that ring whenever you get the chance to do so. And I'm also happy that R-Truth managed to share the ring with his childhood hero. Good for him. Roxanne Perez also showed up on Raw from NXT. She wrestled and defeated Indy Hartwell. It's nice to see her make an appearance. Similar to Ilya Dragunov, I think she's also going to be a massive star for the WWE. She just has the it factor. Sami Zayn and Chad Gable had a good tag team match with Imperium. This was good, but it was more about next week. That is when Sami defends the Intercontinental Championship against Chad Gable in his hometown of Montreal. That is going to be a superb main event. I cannot wait. And finally, Finally, we got the main event match to determine the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. It was Drew McIntyre, Bronson Reed, Ricochet, and Jay Uso. A lot of big names in here, and this was as good as it gets. Each man shined in this one, and just when it looked like McIntyre was going to win, that is when CM Punk screwed him over. Jay Uso then picked up the win, and that is going to be a great match between Uso and Damian Priest. As for Punk and McIntyre, I am loving every second of this feud. These two have probably the best feud going on right now in all of WWE, and I cannot wait to see their match at SummerSlam or whenever it happens. I don't know. I don't care. I just got to see it happen. Anyways, that is it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you all in the next video.